Barbara McClintock was born in Hartford, Connecticut in 1902. With a true pioneering spirit and an insatiable thirst for knowledge, Barbara McClintock became one of the greatest geneticists of the 20th century. Her research laid the foundation for the scientific understanding of the dynamic nature of genes in DNA. I think Barbara was really unique in that she could conceptualize these very difficult ideas in her head when we had no physical understanding of what was going on. Barbara had these ideas about how the genome worked before we, 30 years before we even understood what DNA was. Barbara was an extraordinary person. She was a maverick. She was unto herself. There was no one like Barbara. Barbara prided herself in her uniqueness. It was an extremely important part of her self-identity. And she just had her own way of looking at things and was extraordinarily creative and imaginative. Barbara's scientific training began at Cornell University in 1919, where she began her studies on the genetics of corn. So she went to Cornell, and there she just, she just took every course she could. She just wanted to know everything. And uh, it was a very exciting time in the history of genetics. So it was really the first generations of geneticists, and she was right there, right, you know, from the ground, building up this new science. After earning her Ph.D. in botany in 1927 from Cornell, McClintock was awarded several postdoctoral fellowships, but she soon found that there were very few options in her pursuit of a career as a research scientist. Being a woman in, in science at that time was an enormous hindrance because there were no positions for women researchers. Women could do research if they had husbands who were scientists. They could teach in women's colleges, but they couldn't be heads of research laboratories in major universities. McClintock refused to be confined to the traditional roles for women. And Barbara insisted that she was first and foremost a scientific researcher. She wasn't a woman, she was a researcher. And she was a scientist. She just would not conform. She went her own way. She always went her own way. And she finally got a stable position at Cold Spring Harbor. And that was a lifesaver. It allowed her to do her wonderful, extraordinary work for the rest of her life. When McClintock's early research on transposable elements was published in the 1940s, it was not understood or accepted by the scientific community. The reaction to this research was first disbelief. Also, it was difficult for people to understand. Her writing was extremely terse and idiosyncratic. She was really just dismissed, written, written out. She was respected, but not believed. I went in her lab, we sat down and chatted about a variety of things, including the troubles that she had had with this latest research. It was not well received. Even her colleagues thought that she, something was wrong with her, and she said to me, some of my colleagues say that I must be going through menopause. She continued the work. She was totally convinced that she was right. There was no question in my mind that the information I had received was so strong that there was no way of drawing any other conclusion. Uh, therefore, when you feel that strongly about something, you can't be turned off. Nobody can hurt you. Barbara McClintock spent the rest of her life researching her path-breaking theories of plant genetics at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. She would also meet with young scientists who would come to visit and learn from her. Barbara was all business, at least in my interactions with her. She really was a scientist, she was a researcher, and that just was her whole life. Everything else fell away. She wanted to talk about the plants, the phenomena she was describing, the genetics, and that's what she really wanted to communicate to us as students. Barbara McClintock was given many accolades during her lifetime, including the National Medal of Science, the first MacArthur Foundation grant, and the honor of having a Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory named for her. But it was the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine awarded to her in 1983 that most clearly signaled the changed perception of her earlier groundbreaking genetics research. The story about how 
Barbara McClintock was received in the community changed very radically once she got the Nobel Prize. I think Barbara was ahead of her time, um, and I think that's why it took so long to get the Nobel Prize. She described these very intricate phenomena that people really couldn't grasp in a physical way until many years later. Barbara McClintock died in 1992 at the age of 90, leaving behind a body of work that forever altered our understanding of genetics. Her courage was extraordinary to think things through by herself, to follow what she saw no matter how many dogmas it, it contradicted. It takes tremendous courage and she had that all of her life. Thank you.